This is the Tom Hartman Program. Welcome back. Tom Hartman here with you. And on the line with us, Mark Ames. I want to continue with this conversation that we've been having about about the uh, the murder of Walter Scott uh, in South Carolina and white privilege and all all the dimensions of this. And one piece of it um, has to do with, frankly, Rand Paul, who just announced his candidacy for president of the United States yesterday. Um, in 1982, he wrote an editorial for the Baylor University College paper, Rand Paul. He said, every piece of anti-discrimination legislation passed over the past few decades ignores one of the basic inalienable rights of man, the right to discriminate. Uh, he later wrote, uh, this was in 2002, decisions concerning private property and associations should in a free society be unhindered. Some of these associations will discriminate. A free society will abide unofficial private discrimination, even when that means allowing hate-filled groups to exclude people based on the color of their skin. End of quote. This is supposed to be libertarianism. What the hell is libertarianism? Mark Ames, senior editor of Pando Daily, author of Going Postal, Rage, Murder, and Rebellion, from Reagan's Workplaces to Clinton's Columbine and Beyond, is uh, on the line with us. Pando.com, of course, the website. Mark, welcome back to the program. Uh, good to be back. Thanks for having me on again. Thanks for joining us. Uh, you wrote a piece for Alternet back in 2013 titled The True History of Libertarianism in America, a Phony Ideology to Promote a Corporate Agenda. Tell us the story. Where did where did this libertarian thing come from? Yeah, so I mean, I, I find it interesting that first of all, that people um, on the one hand will say libertarianism is something that's so fresh and new, and it's and it's the big alternative to uh, the two party stranglehold and so on, without even actually asking or answering. Well, where does libertarianism come from? When did it start? Who, who launched it? Has it always been there? And, and libertarians themselves have answers for this. If you read their books, it's, it's not particularly fun reading, but I've done a lot of research on this over the years. Um, and they'll all tell you that the modern libertarian movement, uh, and the first people to sort of use that term for this ideology, was launched in 1946, 46, 47. It was a, a foundation called... Um, uh, the Foundation for Economic Education. It's a, a think tank or whatever you call it. When it. You know, essentially like a 501c3. And it turns out, uh, and, and the head of it is this guy, Leonard Reed, and he's considered by libertarians sort of the, the, the first guru of libertarianism. Well, this is a guy who, um, who was a, a Chamber of Commerce executive, uh, National Association of Manufacturers. He's just a lobbyist. Mm -hmm. um, he didn't even write his own books, right? And so he sets up this outfit called the FEE uh, right after the war, um, backed by all the big names in corporate America, um, the big three auto manufacturers, the big oil companies, banks, the big steel manufacturers, DuPont, uh, Monsanto. Um, and the, the job of libertarianism in those years early on was to provide essentially um, quasi-intellectual propaganda to back um, big businesses' push against uh, the New Deal. And so the ideology was basically founded to push back uh, against, you know, against the New Deal and against uh, social democracy. And these people are hardcore reactionaries, um, just like Charles Koch. You know, these are real hardcore reactionaries who wanted to take the country back to the days of, uh, of Harding and Coolidge, with all that implies. Well, and I was just thinking uh, of Warren Harding. I mean, when he was elected in the election of 1920 on a campaign platform of less government, less business in government, more business, more, more government, in, less government in business, more business in government. In other words, deregulate mm -hmm. and privatize. And on the campaign platform of dropping the top tax rate on, on billionaires, or rich people yeah. back then, from 91% down to 25%, both of which he did. In 1921, yeah. when he became president, what was that called back then? There was they didn't call it libertarianism. Was that just hey, Americanism? We're, it was called what? Americanism. Also, <laughs> anti labor. This is a huge part of it too. I mean, it, it, it's an anti labor, anti social democracy, anti socialist uh, philosophy, and pro, pro big business. It was essentially called Americanism. Interesting. America first, isolationism. Um, very violently anti-union, um, stoking ethnic, um, and, you know, and, and race division, uh, you know, to advance the agenda. I mean, Harding, there, you know, there were reports that he was he was inducted into the KKK in the White House. 
Um, wow. And, and I'll, I'll remind you that uh, Charles Koch, in one of his newsletters right around the time that Obama was elected, I wrote about this for The Nation, Charles Koch um, did a column in his Koch Industries newspaper and said, you know, people ask me, who do I think is the best president of the 20th century and the worst? And he said, my answer will probably surprise you. Warren Harding and Calvin Coolidge I, are, are, were the best presidents that promoted liberty uh, more than anyone. And that's, you know, so, so the libertarianism, let's, there's, there's the, the propaganda PR version of what libertarianism means, and, it, and because originally they stole that word from the left. Uh, originally, libertarianism has to do with kind of social anarchism from Europe. Um, they kind of stole that word because it had liberty in its root. And so, so liberty, hang on just a second. It's, it, this, yeah. there's, there's, there's echoes here of, of other events. I, I remember in, 19, in the mid-1970s, um, in the late 60s and the early 70s, I had been friendly with folks in and supportive of the Right to Life movement. Because the Right to Life movement in the late 60s and early 70s was the anti-death penalty movement. They called themselves the Right to Life movement. And after Roe v. Wade, the anti-abortion people took that term, and you know, for a couple of years there were a lot of anti-death penalty people really upset, but they, they, they lost the argument. Are you saying that the word libertarian similarly had a completely different meaning and was in use by... Oh yeah, absolutely. It was, it was known as a left-wing socialist. Uh, as, as a, a, a part of socialism, essentially, European socialism. Wow. Chomsky's, um, uh, you can find this online, Chomsky himself has talked about this. As he said, you know, everywhere else in the world, the, the term libertarianism is connected to, to socialism, anarchism from the late 19th century uh, in Europe. And as he, as he said, uh, American libertarianism is essentially from Mars. It's 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 the complete opposite. Well, it's it's out, it's not from Mars. It's from it's from a lobbyist in 1946. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, and uh, and so so yeah, that's where it comes from. And I, I think I do think it's important to understand the origins of libertarianism because people seem to keep getting blindsided by what they, by what they think are contradictions. For example. You know, you were just talking about Rand Paul, um, uh, who, is, who is actually stating a very basic libertarian belief, which is that people should be able to do whatever they want on their property. That's what they mean by liberty and libertarianism. Right. Um, and that means the, the right to discriminate uh, against anybody of any race, um, because right. property is in, in the all. It's, it's uh, people who have property should be able to do whatever they want with it. And the more property they have, the more power they should have. Well, and that the Supreme Court took this belief. position for uh, well over 100 years, that the right to associate in the First Amendment had a parallel right, which is the right not to associate, uh, which was the right to discriminate. I mean, they, 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 they used this to, to support white-only country clubs and, and all yeah. kinds of stuff. I mean, you know, this is the basis of Plug it Plus E.V. Ferguson, was it not? Yeah, no, it's um, uh, it's crazy. And on top of it, the idea, he's, he's got a completely false sense of history, though, because on the other hand, the term discrimination also has to do with, um, you know, with monopoly power, you know, in the populists fought against the discrimination, which was the way that private companies were discriminating against certain farmers in certain regions and so on in, in order to basically extract profits. And this is deemed illegal by... Uh, you know, and by by government, um, mm. and and they've been fighting against price discrimination. So I mean, like the idea that there's one definition of of discrimination, and it's in in the old history, it's it's just absurd. Um, and and so I think you know to really understand libertarianism, it's essentially um, uh, it's it's a, a politics and a philosophy for oligarchs, for the super rich. Um, in which property is liberty, right, and and that reinforces and holds together the the essentially white business power structure in this country. Yeah, yeah. Mark Ames, you are brilliant. Senior editor of Pando Daily, Pando dot com, author of Going Postal. Thank you, Marge. Mark. Thanks again. This is the Tom Hartman Program.